This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on Prime Minister's virtual summits with global leaders, a new paradigm. The participants are Anil Wadwa, former diplomat, and Nilova Roy Chaudhary, journalist. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Prime Minister of Finland, Sana Marin, held a virtual summit on the 16th of March. As the world is beginning to get out of the COVID pandemic, the things like virtual summits are becoming increasingly a reality and this was one of the most important ones that the Indian Prime Minister has held recently. And the agenda with Finland covers a very wide range of issues. The two Prime Ministers spoke at some length about uh, the shared values of democracy, rule of law, equality, freedom of speech and a commitment to work for multilateralism and rules-based international order and so on. But what is also important is the other agendas that India and Finland have. And uh, these include things, of course, like climate change and the environment, but also, very importantly, education and the Arctic Circle, in which both are members. Anil, I'd like to ask you, what is the significance of these virtual summits and why is Finland important to India? As far as Finland is concerned, I think it's a very progressive you know, society and economy today. As you know, Finland is a world leader in uh, technology, in science and in education in particular. And uh, within the European Union, it plays a very important role as far as uh, the whole policy towards sustainability partnerships is concerned. You know, this was a very extensive agenda. Obviously, you know, it was not just a digital partnership that um, India and Finland talked about. And as we move forward, the progress, the digital domain will become very important for India. Plus, we had a high-level dialogue which was set up on education ministries of both countries. Then they talked about a sustainability partnership, which involves a number of very important issues like clean energy and circular economy and sustainable development and growth, etc. But very importantly, how does India and Finland cooperate in the Arctic, which is now coming up as a very hot topic. In future, it will become very important as well. Countries, how they can cooperate in Africa, how can they strengthen multilateralism. And of course, EU and India relationship, where Finland is a major player, as I said, where Finland is a country which stresses on gender equality, for instance. It wants to strengthen the WTO and brings in the elements of biodiversity into this relationship, which is, again, a very important subject for India. So between these, if you look at the diversity of this, the subjects that were discussed, it's very clear that India and Finland, the relationship becomes very important in the context of the future development of India and the vision that it has in terms of the transformation of its society for the common good of its population. Right. Among the major things that is now beginning to happen, of course, in any discussions at the level of government and heads of state is the COVID-19 pandemic, the world gradually beginning to get out of this pandemic. So at this particular summit, the prime ministers emphasized the tremendous global efforts that have been in place to speed up the development and manufacture and research into the manufacture of COVID-19 vaccines. And Prime Minister actually said that India has provided over 59 million doses to more than 16 countries, including through COVAX. Prime Minister Marin of Finland also said that, you know, they've invested heavily in research work, particularly through COVAX and in new technologies for COVID-19 vaccines. Going ahead, how important, again, do you think this new sort of global collaboration in what we are calling the COVID-3 program are going to be in terms of India's engagement with other countries. It's very important that India gets all the support from as many countries as possible in the multilateral context as far as WTO is concerned with its uh, program of vaccine maitri. As you rightly said, already these 59 million doses given to 70 countries speaks a lot through COVAX. And India has determined that the multilateral system must support this effort. It should not be regressive and that as many countries as possible and populations around the world should benefit through this effort. Now, of course, India is quite well placed in terms of its production capacity, etc., but does not want, you know, things like IPRs and uh, curbs on technology and equipment to come in the way 
of expanding and ramping up this production, which is after all for the common good. Exactly. In fact, India and Finland also have Africa as a fairly important part of their bilateral agenda. And Africa is the continent that sort of lends itself to something like this, where the joint effort without looking into IPRs makes a lot of difference in terms of providing vaccines to all of the 54 countries there because Africa has been one of the countries that is seriously lagging thus far in getting doses of the vaccination. So India, sustainable development, clean energy, all of these things are on the agenda that India and Finland have with Africa as a center also of their discussions and conversations and work going forward and the partnership. How do you think India and Finland can actually hone in on their joint efforts to make a difference in Africa? If we look at the joint statement, which has been issued at the end of this summit meeting, it stresses a lot on research and development, innovation, energy and clean technologies, and of course, trade and investment. But, you know, what is most important is that Africa was singled out as the and a very important area for collaboration going forward. And I think the two countries have decided also that later in the year they would have a separate meeting on Africa to identify the particular areas where they would be working together. Now, obviously, as you rightly said, the development aspect in Africa is the focus. But at the same time, they would like to pull in their own, you know, strong points the Finnish strong point on innovation and science and technology and uh, the Indian uh, expertise as well and the experience in Africa which they have working for many, many years on development cooperation, the human resources that India has deployed in Africa already and the excellent relationship that India enjoys with African leaderships and countries over the years. So if you put these all together, obviously, you know, it is going to help the continent develop much more than it could otherwise. And also, it would help both countries to do more of trade and investment or join projects together, which would help both countries. And another very, very critical part that both Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Marin have emphasized, I believe, is the whole green growth and the sustainability of development efforts that are happening in Africa and essentially dealing with these massive issues of biodiversity loss and fresh water and ocean degradation, deforestation, desertification, and pollution, all of which, of course, are very, very crucial, not only uh, to Africa, but certainly to India as well, and the rest of the world, given how much climate change is impacting all of us. So these are, again, issues in which the Nordic countries particularly, and Finland in particular, have a great deal of expertise. So is this also something that India at the Nordic Council, for example, the summit level meetings which Prime Minister Modi sort of initiated with the Scandinavian countries, is this all gelling into sort of melding into part of this whole effort to ensure sustainability of development? Yes, I think you rightly said that the Nordic countries and Finland in particular are leaders in this respect. And obviously, India needs a partnership with the Nordic countries in this respect as well, other than, of course, working together in Africa on these issues. But the India-Nordic Summit is going to happen later this year. And Mm -hmm. as preparation for that, it's important that India engages with as many Nordic countries, you know, before that, in preparation for this summit. Of course, before that, we have the India-European Union Leaders Summit in Portugal in May as well. But equally, the India-Nordic Summit later this year would be very important for these particular issues that you mentioned, especially clean energy and circular economy and sustainable development and green growth. Because it's here that India, with its large population and uh, you know the problems of degradation, etc., which it has faced because of a resource crunch, obviously needs the best of technologies going forward and making sure that the switch is made in time for India to be um, accepted as a leader in the effort towards climate change and green growth going forward. The Arctic is another area that both India and Finland share very closely. In fact, at the last meeting of the Arctic Council, India regained its observer status, as it were, in the Finland meeting in May 2019. And in India was re-elected as an observer to the Arctic Council. Now, how important is collaboration between India and Finland in the Arctic Council? And 
And why is the Arctic Council really that important for not just India, but for the rest of the world? So there are two main reasons why the Arctic Council has become very important for the rest of the world. And that is because of the climate change, uh, which has resulted in uh, new routes being opened up due to melting of ice. That's one, and related to that is the preservation of the Arctic as a zone which does not degrade further so that it does not affect climate change all over the world. Secondly, in terms of scientific research that it can provide, in terms of the lessons learned about what has happened and uh, the projections that can be made, the models that can be made, which are very useful for future climate change negotiations. But more importantly, and this is the second point, is that there suddenly seems to be a competition in that area on the polar route, which is the shipping route. Now, obviously, so far, you know, this route is open only for a few months. But if this trend continues and the ice starts, uh, keeps melting, as we have seen over the past few years, that will open up a new area of competition among the big powers. And there are countries like China who are in Asia, but at the same time, they have ambitious plans to make sure that they utilize this to the best of their ability, lay claims to the area as much as possible. And of course, there is competition with the United States and the Russian Federation as well. So there are outside powers who are involved. India has been actually involved in research in, in this area for quite some time. It has two stations already, scientific stations. One of the first countries, the pioneering countries to have done so. Now that is more done because of scientific research and to study the effects of climate change and effects on biodiversity. But I'm sure India would like to expand its presence there. You know, the other thing that I was reading in the joint statement that appeared very, very important was the whole emphasis on this high-level council for education that both countries are planning on setting up. What exactly is this going to be sort of research-oriented? What is the, the stress going to be on in this collaboration? India has just come up with a new education policy. And mm -hmm. India wants to actually, you know, ensure that India transforms itself, you know, in terms of the knowledge of its population going forward, the young population should be more rounded. They should not be focused upon just uh, one issue, but actually should understand a number of issues. So that's what we call holistic education, starting from the school level on to the college and university level. And we already have a consortium, an MOU on sort of consortium between 10 Finnish universities and the 23 IITs. Now, what we decided to do at the summit is to extend this MOU for another five years. Why? Because, you know, we found it extremely important and useful that the emphasis which they have on innovation, that should continue. And as you know, the Indian government's policy lately has been on a lot of emphasis being, is being given to startups and innovation side so that we have not only employment, but also new technologies which emerge from this effort. The government is also supporting it in a very big way. And since uh, Finland has been a leader in the digital domain, and obviously their education focuses a lot on quantum technologies and computing and future mobile technologies, and then moving on from there to the focus on 6G research and development, the kind of future education that will emerge in, in the next few years, and then the focus on digital transformation of teaching and learning. So all these are very essential and cross-cutting elements for which will lead to the efforts towards utilization of artificial intelligence or cybersecurity or blockchain technologies going forward. So India wants to develop that culture in its university. And this is the dialogue which will happen in the future. And that's why this is, was very important for us to extend this MOU with Finland. Great, Anil. Thank you so very much. And we've run right out of time in this really interesting discussion which could have carried on. So thank you so very much, Ambassador Anil Bhatt. Thank you so much, Nilova. You were listening to a discussion on Prime Minister's virtual summits with global leaders, a new paradigm. The participants were Anil Vadva, former diplomat, and Nilova Roy Chaudhary, journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.com. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.